Hello and welcome to the Cloud Native Security Day. Actually, it's probably the last session, so it's about to go. Um, my name is Ariel Schuper, and I'm trying to convince you about Kubernetes risk assessment and why there is a need, why there is a need to go one level deeper uh, than what we have today or what is uh, commonly used today. So thank you for joining my session. Uh, who am I and why am I trying to convince you to do that? So my name is Ariel. Uh, I'm a principal product manager at Cisco. Uh, I joined Cisco following the acquisition of PortShift, where I led the product, uh, the product strategy, the product design, uh, and the product, you know, uh, development. I was a product manager, uh, the VP product management, VP product manager uh, in PortShift. Uh, PortShift was focusing on Kubernetes and Istio security. Uh, period to port shift, I was head of serverless security at Aqua Security, uh, before that at Checkpoint, and working in cloud security uh, for many years. Uh, open source contribution with QB, uh, which is the open source tool we create, we uh, develop and maintain in port shift, uh, focusing on a unique way of scanning uh, runtime uh, environments. Um, participate in Istio security working groups uh, and a few others. So why do we need risk assessment? What worries us? And I think, you know, it's not secret, definitely not today, that Kubernetes contain multiple elements, a lot of elements on the master node, a lot of elements on the worker node, a lot of elements you know, around the container and, you know, the pod themselves. And each one of those elements adds some security complexity more elements, more, more complexity, more items to break. Now, when we, early days attacks, you know, the first, like the Tesla famous attack or the Weight Watchers or around 2018, where the world was early in the usage of Kubernetes, there was a lot of attacks which just stem from simple misconfiguration. In Tesla or Weight Watchers, no one thought they need to configure uh, or at least need to create some login or credentials which required authentication for people trying to access the log the dashboard because they thought Kubernetes dashboard is inside the cluster. So what can what war, what what can happen from that, right? And a lot of those simple attacks came from just you know simple misconfiguration. No one you know configure it properly. Uh, and for this purpose, and I think you know one of the main reasons why uh, we added it was to create some risk assessment frameworks something that allow you to address the ecosystem, to make sure you configure everything correctly, you did everything properly, and you're not left exposed by yourself. Now, if you ask yourself, what is like the common one? So the common and probably the de facto standard today is the CIS benchmark. So the center of internet security create benchmarks for a lot of environments and Kubernetes is one of them. There's a comprehensive set of security checks addressing all the configuration of Kubernetes elements, there is 100 and plus, last time I checked, uh, master node security configuration, every component from the API server, the CD, the controller manager, the scheduler, uh, looking into authentication, authorization, put security profiles, network policies, everything which can govern and control uh, your Kubernetes cluster and 30 plus checks, you know, on the worker node checking for different configuration, different, you know, security configuration of the, of the kubelet, of the file system, of the access to the host, et cetera, et cetera. Now, all of this is really great. And I think it's very, you know, important part, but one of the challenges that, you know, we see when we look at uh, how we secure Kubernetes is there, it's true that misconfiguration are fundamental risks in, Kubernetes environment, but these configurations are not alone. There are more elements which can impact you. There are more attack vectors. There are more penetration options. If we analyze the recent attacks, like the one who shown on my screen, I don't know if you have a chance to see it, things can happen. Even if you configure your, you know, cluster perfectly fine, but because you just use the tool, which is unsecure, uh, in the example, which is quoted by a nice research from Intezer, it's about with scope. Uh, it's because someone crafted like a vulnerable image uh, and planted, or someone created like a, a campaign or an attack, or is really targeting your environment, even if everything is really configured properly, even those ports which are needed or those images which you use uh, can be 
uh, and reason for that, even if the entire cluster is configured uh, properly. So this leads me to at least trying to think that we need something else. We need a framework that addresses the entire spectrum of Kubernetes routes, not just with configuration. We need a framework that addresses also the various stages of the cyber attack. So meaning if misconfiguration or security configuration are there in order to avoid someone from entering the cluster, we need also to have tools that detect if by chance or not by chance or for other reasons, someone did manage to access. So we want to detect it. We want to stop it. We want to minimize and contain this entrance. So it's just, just like the misconfiguration, we need to make sure that the entire uh, life cycle of an attack can be covered. And I think what is really important and might be missing is when something is not configured properly, and I know that I need to configure it, but maybe I don't, I can, maybe this is something that I must change or I cannot change, I must leave it as is. What is the impact? What's, okay, so I have a challenge, I have a problem. I need to, there is a, a problem, but how do I fix it? Maybe there's an alternative. So maybe this one will remain as is, but I can find an alternative that can mitigate um, this risk. So if I would try to create a comprehensive tool, that's what I would do. Um, I didn't create it. I found it and there's a beautiful work, uh, which was done by the Mitra attack. Uh, and I'm proud to be a contributor for that as well. And in the Mitra attack, what they did is they took the entire attack kill chain or the entire life cycle of an attack from the initial access to the exploitation execution, to the different stages, whether it's creating persistency or privilege escalation, and all the steps that attacker would do in order uh, to get uh, his hands on the data or in order to abuse the resources on the cluster, whatever, it doesn't matter. But we need to make sure that we don't just you know, stop at the gate, we keep following it and checking afterwards. And for each of it, they interpreted it, they, they took like the relevant things for containers. So for example, if we examine the privilege escalation, which is, you know, how you can escape to the host, there are the techniques which attackers were used in order uh, to gain access or in order to break out from the container. And if you break out, how you can elevate your privileges and reach the host or take control uh, of the system. So it is important, those type of risks, because not just explaining what was done and how you can do it, but also to explain or for you in order what you can do in order to mitigate it. So if I know that there, I'm exposed in this privilege escalation, I would perhaps can address it by placing using pod security profiles and making sure that you cannot uh, run as a root or making sure that you cannot read uh, anything to the host file system. You can't use those network. And there's many other capabilities which I can use if I want uh, to prevent attack errors. So the idea here, which I think makes the Mitra attack uh, as a good candidate for risk assessment in Kubernetes environment is the idea that we can look at the entire spectrum, okay, entire spectrum of potential attacks, so not just misconfiguration, but also any, you know, any option uh, to penetrate your cluster. It also doesn't stop, okay, it doesn't stop on uh, that doesn't stop on the items that are just, you know, just uh, the entrance. It goes entire uh, life cycle of the attack. Every different stage has its own uh, techniques. And for every single, you know, step, there is something else that you can do. And there is a list of it. So for you as a user, there you get an understanding of what's the impact of this. And then you can see if you have an alternative plan, you have like a backup plan. And what I really find interesting about it, that it's based on information collected, you know, from real attacks, incidents, not theoretical ones. So this is just an example of why, you know, we need something which is slightly level deeper and goes deeper than, than CIS benchmark. Something that, you know, give me tools to allow me to mitigate and cover uh, the entire spectrum. So everything is available on the Mitre attack, on the Mitre org uh, framework. Um, there is an attack uh, matrix which will be published soon. Uh, and thank you very much for joining my session today.